Okay, so okay, so we're gonna start off now with our last part, which is on carboxylic acid. Okay, so what we're gonna cover in this worksheet here, we're really gonna look at uh, what is exactly um carboxylic acid as a homologous series. We're gonna learn uh, how to use the formula, the general formula of the carboxylic acid to determine the rest of the carboxylic acid formula. Okay, we're gonna learn how to draw the displayed uh, formula or the full structural formula, okay, for your carboxylic acid. Then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, isomer. Okay, so this will be the four things we're gonna cover for this worksheet. I'll be going through a little bit um, faster for today. Okay, because most of these things that you have actually, um, in terms of the format, okay, you have actually, you're actually quite familiar with it because it's very similar to LK and alkenes and also alcohols. Okay, so let's start. Okay, question one. So what we have here we are, is that, you know, um, what exactly is carboxylic acid? Okay, are there things around us? Okay, which is actually carboxylic acid. So actually our household vinegar is a common carboxylic, it's actually a carboxylic acid. Okay, it actually contains about 4 to 6% of what we call ethanoic acid. If you go and look at the label, okay, you can look at the label on your um, household vinegar, you may not see the word ethanoic acid. Instead, you may see the word acetic acid. Actually, they are the same thing. Okay, but um, for the sake of a syllabus, okay, the word we're going to use is actually as, uh, ethanoic acid. So let's start out. What exactly is carboxylic acid? So they are, a homologous series, okay. They are homologous series okay, because they are like a, another family okay, of organic acids which have the carboxyl group. Okay, so take note it is called the carboxyl group. Okay, what exactly is the carboxyl group? It's actually the COOH functional group. Okay, carboxyl, sorry, yeah. carboxyl functional group. Okay, so this is the definition for what exactly a carboxylic acid is. The general formula, okay, I'm going to write down in blue. Okay, do take note, huh? the general formula is actually C N. H two n plus one. Sorry, uh, let me write better. Two n plus one, COOH. Now, for carboxylic acid, I just need to take note. Okay, normally we will substitute as n equals to one, n equals to two. But in this case here, n actually starts from zero. Okay, n actually starts from zero. So just take note that your first member of the homolog homologous series n is actually zero. Okay, I say again, ah. Uh, so your first member of the homologous series, your n is actually zero. So given the, so actually part B now, we're going to use the general formula. So we need to determine the molecular formula, right? So if there's the number of carbon is n, is uh, one, number of carbon is one. So this means n is equals to zero. Okay, I say again, uh, number of carbon is one, n is equals to zero because n starts from zero. A little bit different from your alkane, alkenes, and carbox. Alkane, alkenes, and alcohols. Okay, whereas N actually starts at 1. For carboxylic acid, N actually starts at 0. So if I put 0, so I substitute in, I'll get HCOOH over here. How about number of carbon equals to 5? It means N is actually equals to 4. So you realize to determine N is actually number of carbons minus 1. So what you're going to get is a C4H9COOH. Okay, so that is actually the um, molecular formula, how to use the general formula of N, uh, CN, h 2 n plus 1, COH, okay, to get the formula of the carboxylic acid. So I want you to just maybe take one minute to go and try um, number of carbon 7 and number of carbon 10, okay? Just take one minute to go and try now, okay? Just to make sure that you can get a sense of the general formula. Okay, so if the number of carbon is actually 7, so you know N is actually equals to 6, so I'm going to get a C, sorry, uh, so this will actually be a C6 H 2N plus 1 H 13, okay, COOH. Okay, so this is uh, for N equals to 6. As for next one, N equals, uh, sorry, when number of carbon equals to 10, that means N equals to 9. So I'm going to get a C9 
H19 COOH. Okay, CNH2N plus 1 COOH. So that's the um, molecular formula for the number of carbons in each of them. So somebody may say, Che, how is it that when N equals number of carbon is 1, yet my N equals to 0? The reason is really because there's actually one carbon embedded within the molecule itself already. Your functional group actually has a carbon within it. So that's why your N must start from 0. So although my N equals to 4, but you realize the number of carbons I have in total will always add up accordingly. Okay, so I'm purposely circling it and underlining it to show you that the number of carbon actually is still correct. Whatever that I've stated there is actually still correct. Okay, so you can see for the first one, one carbon. Second one, I got one carbon at the carboxyl group, four carbon at the side chain over here. So total, five carbons, so on and so forth for the and it goes, uh, for the seven carbons and 10 carbons accordingly. So just take note of that. Okay, the next one, actually, um, there's one, two, three, and actually there's the next page that's four. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly run through this. Okay, in terms of the name, this will actually one carbon. So, you know, it's meth and metho methanoic acid. Molecular formula, this is actually n equals to zero. So, actually, we have done it at the top just now already. It's actually HCOOH. How to draw it? Number of carbons first. So, methanoic, one carbon. Modify the functional group in. Followed by making sure all the carbons have four bonds. So, this carbon only has three bonds. So, add in one more H. Okay, so that's how you go about drawing methanoic acid. I'm going to now do for propanoic instead of ethanoic. I'm going to do for propanoic acid. So, three carbon is propanoic acid. Okay, molecular formula. Because it's propanoic, number of carbon is three. So, this one N equals to two. So, I will have C2H5, COOH. So, total got three carbons. So, I'm going to draw three carbons first. Modify the functional group in. Next, make sure that all my carbons have four bonds. So this carbon already got four bonds, so I don't care about it anymore. This carbon now only has two bonds, so I must draw two more hydrogens around it. This carbon only has one bond, so I must draw another three more hydrogens around it. So at this stage, I'm going to give you about another one minute to just do for me for two carbons and for four carbons. Okay, so take the next um, one minute, okay, to you can try it out. So your time starts now. Okay, let's go. Okay, so for two carbons, it's actually ethanoic acid. In this case, N equals to one. Okay, you're going to have a CH3COOH. So I got two carbons. Modify the functional group in. Make sure all my carbons have four bonds. So this carbon already have four bonds. Good. This carbon only has one bond. So I need to draw three more H over here. So this is for my ethanoic acid. Just double check answer. Make sure that's correct. Okay. Giving you five more seconds to just check your answers. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Okay, so it's a butanoic acid now. So this is the molecular formula. So in this case, N equals to three. So I got C, sorry, uh, C3H7, COOH. In this case, four carbon. So I'm going to draw my four carbon chain. Modify the functional group in. You realize I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Next one, last carb. Make sure all my carbon has four bonds. So this carbon already has four bonds. So good. This carbon now only has two bonds. So I'm going to draw two more hydrogens in. This carbon, draw two more hydrogens in. This carbon left uh, only got one bond. So I'm going to draw another three more bonds in. So this is my butanoic acid. Okay, so you have learned how to draw the first four members of the carboxylic acid. You have learned how to do the uh, molecular formula and you know how to name them. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of um, isomerism. Okay, a little bit of isomerism. Now, because carboxylic acid, the isomerism is actually um, quite simple to do. Lah. Okay, in your syllabus, we just need to learn, really get used to the idea of chain, is chain isomerism, literally the branching out. Okay, just in case you all can't remember. Last one, positional isomerism. This is about the important groups. Generally, whenever we refer to the important groups, we are actually referring to the functional group, okay, being shifted around. Okay, so for carboxylic acid, the functional group actually very hard to shift around. 
Okay, normally we we'll always put it at the end for carboxylic acid. Okay, so I say again, for carboxylic acid, the functional group will normally be placed at the end. So it's actually not so difficult. Lah. Okay, so I'm going to do for all of you here, okay, the examples. So I'm going to draw the different isomers for pentanoic acid. Pentanoic acid, pen tells you that there's five carbon. Okay, so you can see C4, H9, COOH. So total five carbons, right? Longest chain, five carbon. This is my real normal pentanoic acid, straight chain pentanoic acid. So draw five carbon in one row. Modify in the functional group. Then I'll complete the rest of the carbons with hydrogen to make sure that they all have four bonds. Okay, I'm gonna do the I'm not gonna do the four carbon one, I'm gonna do the three carbon one just to show it to you. Okay, three carbon one, how to exactly draw it. So I'm gonna draw three carbons first. Okay, three carbons. Then I got two more carbons here, right? So I'm gonna draw. I know that whenever I do branching, I cannot branch at the ends. I can only branch in the middle. Okay, so my three carbon longest chain actually is like this. I'm going to draw one carbon branching out from the middle, another carbon branching out from the middle. Okay, so this is actually my longest, um, this is actually my three carbon isomer. Okay, I think, sorry. This is actually a three carbon longest chain isomer of the pentanoic acid. How to complete the rest? Once I got the carbon frame out, Modify the functional group in. Make sure that all my carbon now has four bonds. Okay, so this is the three carbon longest chain. Okay, and then with the branching out at the sides there. Okay, this is the isomer, another isomer of the pentanoic acid. So just in case, just in case you'll forget what exactly is an isomer. So isomer, they have the same molecular formula. Okay, same molecular formula. But different structure. Okay, so you realize that this is, if you go and count number of carbons, number of hydrogens, it will still be... C4H9COOH for this one here. This will still be a C4H9COOH. Okay, except that the branching is a little bit different. So you're asking, then how would you name this? What exactly is the name of this fella here? So because my longest chain is three carbon, so actually this is a proper noic acid. But this is actually a 2,2-dimethyl two, two Proper knowing acid. Okay, you don't need to know how to name it. Okay, I say again, you don't need to know how to name it. So don't worry. Okay, this will be uh, as part of your homework. Okay, to just really see whether you know how to do the isomerism of the um, carboxylic acid. Okay, so let's go on. Okay, to the end of this worksheet. Once again, this is just a quick recap of what are the five characteristics of the homologous series. So I've studied alkenes, alkenes, alcohols, carboxylic acid. So within each of the family, okay, what is the five characteristics? What are the five things that they all have within each family? So first thing, okay, is that they have the same functional group. Okay, because they are in the same family, they must sort of like have the same surname, right? So the functional group is like the surname. So because they have the same, they are all from the same, fun they all have the same functional group, they have similar chemical properties. Okay, so this one here, it's really a very quick recap of why are we studying, how, how to really study organic, uh, organic chemistry, okay? Each of the families. There's a gradual change in their physical properties. Okay, members of the same homologous series have the same general formula, okay, which we did just now. How to use the general formula for carboxylic acid. And last one, each member of the series differs from the next by a CH2 group. Okay, from one member to the next, uh, the next immediate member. Okay, so these are the five characteristics of the homologous series. Okay, later on, there's a lot more drawing. I'll need you all to try it out. Okay, so don't worry, more opportunity for you to try it out later on. So let's go on to the next slide. 
Okay, now we're going to look at the reactions of a carboxylic acid. Okay, the reactions are actually not too tough, okay, for some of the initial ones. Although it looks like there's a lot of reactions here, but they are, because carboxylic acid is an acid, okay, because carboxylic acid is an acid, okay, that's why you can see here, they react with reactive metal, they react with carbonates, they react with base, because they behave like acids. Okay, so let's start. Okay, let's start on this worksheet here. This worksheet, we're going to cover the points indicated here. Okay, the first four members of carboxylic acid are they're all soluble in water. Okay, but their boiling point shows gradual change. So what is actually happening in terms of the physical properties? How is their boiling point changing? So when going down the series, the boiling point actually increases. Very similar to your alkanes, alkenes, and alcohols. Why is it that the boiling point increase? Because going down the series, okay, the molecular size increases. So what if the molecular size increase, right? This results in greater intermolecular force of attraction. Hence, more energy is required to overcome these forces. So, yeah, to overcome these forces. Okay, so you say, wow, I just write so many times. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. It's the explanation is exactly the same for alcohols, for alkenes, for alkenes. Okay, so actually you don't need to memorize four times. Okay, you just need to memorize one time and learn how to apply across all of them. It's the same reasoning. Okay, how the molecular size increase result in greater molecular, greater intermolecular force of attraction, hence more energy required to overcome the forces. So just think about this. Okay, so this is how the physical property. So what we have covered so far in the first part here is really about how the physical property changes. Next one, we're going to look at really about the chemical properties of carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid, they are weak acids. Did you hear this before? Yes, under acids and bases. So what exactly are weak acids? So let's use ethanoic, ethanoic acid as an example. So ethanoic acid is CH3COOH. How does ethanoic acid behave when you put them in water? So let's look at the dissociation. So when I put ethanoic acid in water, so ethanoic acid, when I put it in water, when you dissolve it in water, okay, what actually you have is this reversible arrow thingy. Okay, that means it's a reversible, uh, reversible reaction. So it will partially ionize to give you CH3COO minus equals plus H plus equals. So you can see because there's an H plus over here, that's why it's acidic. But why is it a weak acid? Because of this silly arrow over here. A weak acid due to partial dissociation. So this is how you look at the equation and try to reason it out. So obviously in terms of the explanation, how would you explain why carboxylic acids are weak acid? It's really because when they dissolve in water, okay, they will, okay, what will they do? They will this, they will push, okay, they will uh push. Yeah, okay, let me let me think of the correct word to use. Huh? they will they will ionize partially. So okay, this, okay, I think the word that you all use more often will be dissociate. So they will dissociate partially. Okay, they will dissociate partially. Okay. To give H plus ions. Now, why must I say the word H plus ions? It's really because you are talking about acid here. That's why I must have the idea of it being giving a H plus ions. But why must I say partial dissociation? Why must dissociate partially? It's really because of the idea of weak. 
So each of these terms are actually related to um, part of the uh, to part of what they are actually asking you to explain. So weak tells you about the uh, dissociate partially, okay, which is indicated by the reversible arrow. Then why is it an acid? It's really because when it dissociates, it gives you the H plus ions. Okay, so I personally highlight in green and yellow to show you why must I have the partial dissociation? Why must I have the H plus over there? So a bit of recap of your acid. Okay, so because they are weak acids, okay, they are weak acids, they are not that strong, but they are still acidic. So because they are acidic, they will react with my reactive metals, carbonates, and bases. So when they react, they will actually form salts. Now, how to name the salts? I think that's the different thing. You know, like if it is a um, hydrochloric acid, you know it's chloride. Sulfuric acid used, you know it's sulfate. Nitric acid used, you know it's nitrate. But how about this carboxylic acid here? So you can see metal knowing acid, if I were to react it and a salt is formed from the acid, we will say something metal knowing. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, sodium plus methanoic acid. So this is an, actually a metal plus acid reaction. My salt that's being formed will actually be sodium methanoic. Okay, sodium methanoic plus hydrogen. So take note of the naming. Okay, I want you to think what would be the name for a uh, proper knowing acid? What's the salt name? Butanoic acid, if I let it react, what would be the name of the salt? So you know it's something methanoic, something ethanoic for methanoic acid and ethanoic acid. How about proper knowing acid? How about butanoic acid? So take about 45 seconds to just try to get the answer. Okay, 45 seconds begin now. Okay, so um, I believe most of you would have gotten it. So for propanoic acid, the salt form will actually be something propanoid. Okay, you realize it must always end with the A-T-E at the back. Huh? So butanoic acid, it will be something butanoid. Okay, kind of weird at the start now when you're looking at it, but you will get a hang of it. Okay, because you'll be using this naming quite a fair bit. Huh? So let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, so part C here. Hey, sorry, I realized the header. Ayo, the, the thing go wrong, but never mind. Okay. And then for part C now, okay, I want you to now look at the word equation and then try to come up with the chemical equation. Huh? So I'm gonna give you a first example here. So ethanoic acid plus sodium. This is a acid plus metal reaction. So what I'm gonna get would be sodium ethanoid. plus hydrogen gas, okay? Balancing equation. So you realize when I look at this whole thing here, nope, it is not balanced. Okay, because I got H2 over here. The H is actually contributed by the COOH, this H over here. So I'll need two of this to balance this hydrogen over here. Once I got two of this whole big jing gang here, I'll need two of this whole thing here. So what you can do is imagine this whole thing here is one cluster, okay? This CH3COO is actually one cluster. So this ethanoate, okay, is one big cluster over here. So I see uh, two times of this whole thing, means I'll need two times of this whole thing. Now my sodium, I got two of them, so I just want two over here. Okay, so that's how you go about balancing the equation. That's how you go about looking at the chemical formula. So I want you now try, how about for proper knowing acid plus zinc? Okay, proper knowing acid plus zinc. Okay, the equation is going to be slightly more difficult, but I think y'all should be able to give it a good shot at it. Okay, so I'll give y'all maybe a one minute to just try this out. Okay, your time starts now. Go through it now. Okay, proper knowing acid plus zinc, so acid plus metal reaction. So I'm going to get zinc proper knowing Okay, zinc proper knowing I hope you're getting a sense of what's the salt that's being formed plus hydrogen gas, because it's an acid plus metal reaction. 
What's the equation? Propanoic acid formula. C. Okay, this one is uh, N equals to 2R. Uh, N equals to 2R. Uh. So I got C2H5COOH plus Zn. Okay. Giving me C2H5COOZN. Now take note, this is a 2 over here. Because, okay, because uh, C2H5COO is actually a single negative charge. So I just need to take note of this. Okay, those of you who are struggling trying it out, okay, so this is another clue that you need to take note. Whenever it loses one H, the whole thing just becomes a single charge. Okay, single charge anion. So zinc, I know, will be a 2 plus. So bopian, I'll need two of this plus H2. Okay. So let's balance it out. H2 over here. So I'll need two. I got two whole cluster over here. I'll need two of it here. So actually my whole equation now is balanced just by putting a two over here. Right? Just by having a two over here. Okay. So this is the chemical equation and the word equation. Right? We're going to do a lot more of this, okay? Because uh, I'm going to go through really the three uh, reactions. Okay, although you may think that it's just an acid base reaction, but really it's about getting familiar with the chemical formula and the chemical names. So the next one we're going to do will be carboxylic acid with carbonates. Okay, you know the products will actually be salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So methanoic acid plus potassium carbonate, I'm going to get salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So what's the salt here? This will actually be potassium Methanoate. Okay, you realize instead of writing a single line, I actually wrote it or across uh, two lines. Okay, so that at least I won't take up too much space. Plus water, plus carbon dioxide. How exactly to do the chemical equation? So methanoic acid is HCOOH. Potassium carbonate, K2CO3. Potassium methanoate. This will actually be H-C-O-O-K. Okay, H cook. <laughs> okay, never sorry. Just ignore me. H2O plus CO2. Okay, so how do I go about doing this? I know I got two potassium here, so I'll need two of this. I know that since I got two clusters of this methanoid, hence my methanoid here, I also need two of them. CO3. CO2 over here, so one extra oxygen bonded to the two hydrogen here. So actually my whole thing now is balanced. Okay, so methanoic acid plus potassium carbonate give you potassium methanoid, H cook, <laughs> okay, uh, and water plus CO2. Okay, so this is um, for the methanoic acid example. Okay, I'm going to give you some time now to just go and try out um, the next one. Okay, so we're going to try this out now. I'll give you about one minute again to just try it out. Okay, so let's go through this now. So, butanoic acid plus copper 2 carbonate. I'm going to get copper 2. So, just think, note, you still must have the 2 over there. Huh? Copper 2 butanoid. Okay, butanoid plus water plus carbon dioxide. So, the products are exactly the same, salt, water, and carbon dioxide, except the name of the salt is different. Chemical equation. Butanoic acid, so N equals to 3. So C3H7COOH plus CuCO3. This is going to give me, copper is going to be 2 plus because copper 2. Your butanoate is this whole big cluster over here without the H. So it's going to be C3H7COO bracket 2 Cu plus H2O plus CO2. So I know my, I got the, this two big cluster. I got a, the cluster of a, a butanoate over here, right? Two of them. So I need two over here. If you look at the rest of it, actually it should be balanced already. Okay. So this is for the carbonate plus acid reaction. Well, I hope you're getting a hang of the ready this um, butanoate, okay, the all your carboxylic acids kind of 
um, reactions, okay, to form the salts, okay, and how the thing looks. You realize that I will always, I, you realize, uh, I hope I, by now you realize, the metal is always at the back. Quite different from your regular uh, ionic equations where your metal is always placed in the front. For organic, when you let them react in the salt name, the metal is always placed at the back. Okay, so just take note of that. Okay, the last one we're going to look at is really acid plus base reaction. Okay, acid plus base. So I'm going to give you one example again, ethanoic acid plus sodium hydroxide. I'm going to get sodium ethanoate plus water. Okay, so acid plus base give you salt plus water, salt plus water. So chemical equation, this C, this is uh, N equals, sorry, sorry. This is N equals to one. It's because ethanoic, is, ethanoic acid is two carbons. N equals to one here. So I'm going to get CH3COOH plus NaOH. This is going to give me CH3COONA plus H2O. Okay, do I need a balance? Uh, don't need to balance anymore because it is already balanced. Okay, so I want you now take the next one minute, go and try this out again. Okay, so you can see how the rhythm of practicing, it will really help you to get into the idea of how to go about doing the equation. So one minute again, let's go. Okay, ethanoic acid plus magnesium oxide, this is a base. So acid plus base, give me salt and water. In this case, my salt will be magnesium. Ethanoid plus water. So my chemical formula, you can see once again, it's ethanoid acid. So you see H3, COOH plus MgO. This is going to give me magnesium ethanoid. Magnesium is 2 plus. Ethanoid will be a single charge. So I'm going to get CH3, COO, bracket 2, Mg plus H2O. Balancing it out, I'll need to put a 2 over here and everything will be fine. Okay, it's already balanced out. Okay, so I hope you got this answer. If not, okay, uh, please go back and re-examine how it is being done. If you need help, let me know. Okay, we can definitely go through it a little bit more. Okay, so we have gone through the three main reactions okay, that carboxylic acid actually undergo when it behaves like an acid. Okay, when it really behaves like a normal acid. But because this organic chem, so obviously there's a little bit more reactions to it. Lah. Okay, so carboxylic acids also can undergo condensation reaction with alcohols. Well, we're going to cover it later on in the subsequent worksheets. But in this case here, I just want to cover that they don't not only react with my um, metal, carbonate, and base, but they also react with alcohols. Okay, now... What's the product form when carboxylic acid reacts with alcohols? This is actually, the product is actually called an ester. Please take note, it is without an H. As I mentioned to you all, okay, the other time I put an H for um, my answer in all levels. Huh? So please forget about the H. Huh? H is with the person's name. Huh? So what's the process? Okay, because my product form is called an ester, the name of the process when they react is actually called esterification. We're going to cover a little bit more on this. Okay, but when carboxylic acid reacts with alcohols, we actually will form the product called ester. And the process is actually called esterification. Okay, esterification. Okay, so this marks the end of this worksheet now, worksheet five, where we have really uh, talked a little bit about more about the reactions, the chemical properties, and also touch on one physical property, which is the boiling point, how it changes as it goes from one series to the next. So that's for worksheet five. Okay, let's uh, take a quick three-minute breather. Uh. Let's take a quick three-minute breather. Okay, you can go and get water or something. We'll come back in uh, three minutes time at 11.30. Uh. Okay, so before we go on, so give your brain a little bit of break first. Okay, so three minutes break. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next part, which is, uh, once again, it is uh, still about carboxylic acid, but we're going to look a little bit more in details about the product of a particular reaction. So we mentioned in the last worksheet that, you know, uh, carboxylic acid and alcohols, they'll react together, and the product form will actually be this thing called ester. 
Okay, so when carboxylic acid and alcohols form, react, they will actually form esters. Okay, so we're going to really go a little bit more into the details of what the esters are. Okay, so let's start. So esters are actually sweet-smelling compounds formed by the reaction of carboxylic acids and alcohols. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Describe the appearance of esters and its solubility in water. So esters are actually colorless liquid. Okay, they're actually colorless liquid. Okay, and they're actually insoluble in water. Okay, just like all most of organic compounds, most organic substances that are actually insoluble in water. Okay, what is the functional group? Because esters is another homologous series. We're not going to study too much into detail. We're not going to learn about the general formula. But because it is another um, homologous series, we can actually identify them through this idea of a functional group. So what's the functional group of ester? Okay, it's actually this. Okay. So you realize it is very similar to your acid. Okay, very similar to acid. So this is actually the functional group of ester. Sorry, uh, let me write properly. But it is actually the functional group for ester. Okay, I want you to compare it with the functional group of your carboxylic acid. This is the functional group of acid. Carboxylic acid. So what you realize is that it's actually this space over here that's different. So for ester, down here is a space that's attached to something else, maybe another chain, another big molecule. Whereas for carboxylic acid, the H actually has been removed. Uh, carboxylic acid actually is attached to a H over here. So really the difference comes with that particular spot where I highlighted in green, where the H is. Okay. Now what's the name of the process in which esters are formed by the reaction of carboxylic acids and alcohols? Okay, the name of this process I mentioned is actually called esterification. And esterification actually is a type of condensation reaction. Okay, we'll go into a little bit more detail why we really call it condensation reaction. Okay, but it is a type of what we call a condensation reaction. Okay, so we can actually make it in the lab. Okay, but uh, our school lab, I don't think we have all the... No, actually we have, we have. But it can be a bit dangerous to make it. Okay, because um, of certain catalysts that you're using and stuff. Okay, so let's go on to question two. To make ester in the lab, we can do it. Okay, we can actually put ethanoic acid, warm it up with ethanol, both of which we would have in the lab, in the presence of a catalyst. So what is this catalyst used for this reaction? It's actually concentrated sulfuric acid. That's why it is not that safe. Huh? It's actually concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, it's actually that particular acid is being used okay, as part of the reaction, okay, as a catalyst for the reaction itself. Okay, so concentrated sulfuric acid. Now, most people tend to forget the word concentrated, so just take note. Huh? You need to have the word concentrated. Huh? No concentrated, you're going to get the wrong. Okay, we're going to mark you down wrong because sulfuric acid, dilute and concentrated ones are actually quite different. Okay? In terms of the kind of reactions it can cause. Next one, next page. Okay, write a reaction, write a word equation for the reaction. Okay, this is between uh ethanoic acid and ethanol. Okay, ethanoic acid and ethanol. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write first, okay. I'm going to start off with the alcohol. So ethanol plus ethanoic acid. I am going to get my ester. The ester actually is called ethyl ethanoate. I will explain more really how do I go about getting it. Plus water. Okay, now, because this is a reversible reaction, by drawing a single arrow, actually it's wrong. Okay, so in this reaction here, take note, it should be a double arrow. 
And because you have a catalyst, which is a condition, so you should write it down here. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so reversible arrow, concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, as part of the arrow, the reaction. Okay, the condition on top of the reversible arrow reaction. Okay, so this is the word equation for the reaction that we have. The ester is actually this thing. So this ethyl ethanoate is actually the ester. Okay, this ethyl ethanoate is actually the ester. So I'm going to show you what happens okay, in the reaction. So ethanol, so I got C, a round full structural formula. So I got two carbons. I'm going to put my OH here. So this is my ethanol. Okay, ethanol over here. Ethanoic acid, okay, because I have two carbon. Instead of attaching the functional group over on the right hand side, I attach it to the left hand side. Okay, so this is my ethanoic acid. Nice arrow over here, concentrated sulfuric acid. Okay, so what happens in the reaction? So let's take a careful look. What's going to happen here is that the H from the alcohol, the OH from the acid will combine to give you the water. Okay, so I should agree. So this is what is combined. And what's going to happen here is that the bond over here and the bond over here they will combine, okay? They will form a bond. And hence, what I'm going to get, okay, these two blue parts will attach. Okay, what I'm going to get is over here, okay? So I'm going to draw it over here because I need a bit more space. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so you can see this on the left-hand side. I'm going to connect it to the right-hand side. I hope you can see here that what I'm going to shade in brown. Okay, sorry. Huh? What I'm going to shade in brown is actually from the acid. What I'm going to shade in lime green okay, is actually from the alcohol. So hope you can see this. And how do we give the name ethyl ethanoate? It's really because the alcohol actually forms the front part of the name, ethyl. The back part of the name actually comes from the acid, which is ethanoate. Okay, I know this is not a very good example to showcase the name itself. Okay, so we're going to look at a little bit more at the bottom here. Okay, so in this question, okay, sorry, let me, in case some of you are still copying up, huh? Okay, in this question three here, in the formation of the ester functional group, the CO bond of the acid is broken and the OH bond in the alcohol is broken, like what I mentioned on top. For the following reaction, circle the cluster, circle the atom or the cluster atom which breaks away from the carboxylic and acid and alcohol. Then draw the full structural formula of the products form and name them. Okay, so quite a bit of things to do. First, we need to circle. Okay, for the circling, let's uh, use red. Uh, the drawing, let's use green over here. And the last thing I need to do, wow, I still need to name them, name the products. So actually there's three things to do in each of these questions. Okay, so to know which atom or which cluster of atoms that break away, I need to know which is the alcohol, which is the acid. Simplest way, identify the reactants first. So in this case over here, part A actually is exactly the same as the top. This is ethanol. This is ethanoic acid. The cluster of atoms that's going to break away, okay, in this case here, it's going to be this, and it's going to be this. And they will form together to give you your water. Then the rest of it will combine 
I'll get C, C, H, 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 H. Over here, C double bond O, C, H, H, H. So this one here is actually called your E tau ethanoid. Okay, I'm going to do one more example. Okay, do part B for your. Okay, part B is actually slightly different. Okay, so just do one more example just to show, show you. This is actually methanol. This is once again ethanoic acid. Okay, so the alcohol is different. Let's circle the group that will actually react away. So it's the H from the alcohol, is the OH from the acid. These two are combined to give you your water. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so it's easier for me to draw. And now I'm going to draw my metal ethanoid. So this is my methyl the over here from the alcohol. I'm going to do, attach it to the acid now. So this is actually my methyl ethanoid. Okay, so I want you to try now for part C. Okay, and then try for part D. Try C and then try D. Those who are faster can, can try E. Okay, so I'll give you about 1 minute and 30 seconds. Okay, 1 minute 30 seconds to go and try out these questions over here. Okay, so I'm going to go through my answers now. Okay, for the first one, once again, what you have here is actually a methanol. This is three carbon acid. So actually this is proper knowing acid. So what is the atom that's going to be broken away? So this H and this OH. So H from the alcohol, OH from the acid. They'll combine to give me my water. Okay, so in esterification, water is always formed. And what I'm going to get would be methyl propanoid. How to draw it? So this is my methyl group. With the over here from the alcohol. And then I'm going to combine it with my propanoic acid. So one, two, three, three carbons. Okay. So this is actually known as methyl propanoid. Propanoid. Right? Metal propanoid. For part D, uh, some of you, if you are sharp enough, you realize, sure, you're trying to trick me, is it? Yeah, trying to trick you. Because now, on the left hand side, it's no longer an alcohol. This is actually an acid. This is methanoic acid. This is actually ethanol. Okay, ethanol. So acid, the OH group will break. Alcohol, the H will break. So I'm going to get water from it. I can actually just combine it together. So I'm going to write on the left-hand side, C double bond O, H. This is on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is an O. Then I'll have two carbons, H, 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 H. What will be the name of it? Remember, the front part of the name is always from the alcohol, so it'll be ethyl. Back part of the name is always from the acid, so this methanoid. So I want going to highlight in green to show you. This part over here on the left hand side is the methanoid. Okay, this part here on highlighted in green. Okay, so yeah, let me highlight again. Huh? Okay, for in blue, but it's actually this part over here. For the part in green, it'll be here. Okay, so you can see the, the naming. Okay, it's a little bit tombale, eh, from compared to the rest of them, a bit opposite. Okay, because although the metanoid is at the left hand side, but the naming is on the right-hand side. So just take note of this reversal. Huh? Or what you can do is you can actually try to swap. Instead of saying methanoic acid plus ethanol, you can put ethanol 
plus methanoic acid. That might help you a little bit. Those who have already done the third one, okay, good. I'm just going to not draw it out, but I'm going to just uh, write out the name for you and circle some of the things, okay, just to keep it quick. So this is the acid. The OH group will detach. The H from the alcohol will detach. So this is actually propanol. This is actually ethanoic acid. Okay, the product form, actually, I'm just going to write the name. Okay, what you're going to get is propyl uh, ethanoid plus water. Okay, propyl ethanoid plus water. So you can try to draw it out. Okay, I will not uh, be going through this. Okay, next. Now, this is the interesting one. To create fragrance of fruits for products, actually, this is really what's being done. Different esters are used as flavoring agents. The esters and their respective flavors are shown in the table. So if I got methyl butanoid, actually it'll give you a flavor of an apple. Pentyl ethanoid give you the flavor of a banana. So that's actually how you get banana flavored drinks or banana flavored substances. Octal ethanoid is for the flavor of orange. Ethyl methanoid, if you want to be flavored rum. Okay, rum is actually an alcohol product. Okay, so what is actually the use of ester? Okay, esters are actually used as, first thing, perfumes. Okay, they're actually used in perfumes because they're sweet smelling. So you want banana flavored perfume. Okay, I mean, normally people won't have, lah, but banana flavored perfume, yes, put your pentyl ethanoid in. It's good. Okay, they are actually also used as artificial food, uh, artificial food flavoring, not coloring, uh, artificial food flavoring not colouring, as I mentioned. And also, they can actually be used as solvents for cosmetics or even glue. Okay? Glue, maybe not so much, but maybe more for uh, cosmetics. Apple-flavoured cosmetic. Okay, I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm not a lady, so I don't really buy this cosmetic stuff. But I do smell... Um, guys and girls who spray deodorant that are of like citric flavor, maybe orange kind of flavor. So yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do for part B, okay, is to really name and draw the full structural formula of the acid and alcohols that is reacted to form each of this flavor. So for apple, okay, I'm just going to do one example. Apple is actually methyl butanoid. I know that this part here in green, oh sorry, yeah, in green, butanoid actually comes from the acid, methyl actually comes from the alcohol. So I know my alcohol will actually be methanol. I know that my carboxylic acid will actually be a, sorry, yeah, will actually be a butanoic acid. Okay, so I hope you can see how the I get a methanol and the butanoic acid. So then I'm supposed to draw it out. So met methanol. This is methanol. Butanoic acid. So it's a four carbon acid. Okay, so I've shown you once of roughly how we can go about doing it. I want you to go and try now, okay, for banana and for rum. Okay, so for banana, just to help everybody, banana is pentyl ethanoid. Pentyl ethanoid. Pent actually stands for five. Okay, pentyl ethanoid. Pent actually, pentyl actually stands for five. Rum is ethyl methanoid. Ethyl methanoid. Okay, so I want you all to go and try now, okay, for banana and for rum. Give you about maybe one and a half minute again to just try to solve this. Okay, so your time starts now. Let's go. Let's carry on. So for, I'm just going to go straight into the answer. I'm not going to like try to uh, explain too much to you all. So pentyl will be the alcohol one. So this is actually pentanol. Okay, maximum actually you need to go is until 
but okay, four carbons. But I just introduced five carbons to you. Acids will actually be ethanoic acid. How to draw pentanol? So it's five carbon. Okay, five carbon, OH over here. And I'll just fill it up with H. Okay, so this is my pentanol, ethanoic acid. I got two carbons, so modify the functional group in, then complete it with H. So this is my ethanoic acid. For rum, it's ethyl methanoid, so it's actually ethanol. I think it looks like it's not following. So we are. Okay. Uh, a bit off. Huh? Let me realign a little bit. Okay, good. Okay, so let me write this again. So this pentanol. Okay, for rum, this will be ethanol plus methanoic acid. Sorry, methanoic acid. So ethanol will be two carbons with an OH over here. Just double check your answer. Okay, so two carbon uh, two carbon alcohol. Methanoic acid is a one carbon carboxylic acid. Okay, so I hope uh, by going through all this, you are more familiar with the naming, the drawing, okay, and how to derive what alcohol and what carboxylic acid actually reacts to form the ester itself. Okay, a lot of examples I've been given really just is just to help you to ease in to make sure that you know how the esters are formed. Okay, so this is going to be the last worksheet for your acids and carb uh, of course, carboxylic acid. Sorry, we're not at the end yet because there's macromolecules. Okay, so let's push through this. This last part here actually is just how we can produce ethanoic acid from ethanol. Two main reactions here. Is either you oxidate, ox oxidize it using acidified potassium manganate 7. This guy here is a purple color solution. Okay. It is an oxidizing agent. Okay. Or you can use atmospheric oxygen, but I will need bacteria with it. So you want to use atmospheric, ox uh, atmospheric oxygen to oxidize your ethanol you will need bacteria together with your atmospheric oxygen. So let's start on really how these two uh, things works. So the diagram shows ethanoic acid produced by the reaction of a mixture of ethanol and acidified potassium manganate 7. So take note, acidified. Huh? State the reducing and oxidizing agent. So as already mentioned, KMnO4, which is your acidified potassium manganate 7, this is the oxidizing agent. Okay, it comes as a pair. So if ethanol reacts as acidified potassium, potassium manganate 7, which means that if KMnO4 is oxidizing, this tells me that my ethanol must be the reducing agent. Okay, ethanol is the reducing agent. So describe what will be observed in the boiling tube. Now, I did mention to you, right, that potassium manganate 7 is a purple solution. After reaction, the purple solution actually will become colorless if it does react. So what will be observed is that the purple KMnO4, I mean, purple acidified KMn, oh, sorry, oh, yeah. let me rewrite, huh? the acidified KMnO4 solution will turn from purple to colorless. Okay, take note, you must say the before and the after. So it will turn from purple to colorless. Okay, what is this reaction over here? Now, this is the interesting thing here about this oxidation reaction. You don't need, I say again, you don't need to know the full reaction with KMnO4. Just know that my KMnO4 actually produces an oxygen. So this is actually how the reaction looks. I got my ethanol over here. Okay. This is my ethanol. I will 
have two oxygen. This oxygen, this is actually oxygen from the oxidizing agent, which is actually your KMnO4. So you realize it's interesting because I don't write KMnO4. Instead, I write two oxygen here. Okay, because the reaction is quite complex, so they simplify it for you like this. So take note, it's not O, uh, it is a square bracket O because this is actually uh, like a segment taken out from the oxidizing agent. Okay, you need to heat it up. Okay, that's the condition. And what you're going to get is the ethanol is going to turn into ethanoic acid. So I'm going to draw my ethanoic acid over here. And I'm going to get water from it. Okay, so this is what happens here. My ethanol after getting oxidized is going to turn into my ethanoic acid. I'm not, going to no, I'm not going to tell you the steps in the whole reaction over here, what uh, exactly happens. You're going to cover it uh, if you go tertiary education. Okay, but I just need you to take note how ethanol can become ethanoic acid. You need to know this chemical equation over here. And this is the part which is a little bit weird. But I guess you will enjoy it better when it's simplified for you like this. Okay, so this is how uh, ethanol can become ethanoic acid, okay, by letting it react with acidified potassium manganate 7 solution. Okay, let's go on to the next one. We can look at in terms of how we can produce ethanoic acid from, from ethanol using the second method, which is with atmospheric oxygen. So when ethanol is left exposed to air, if your wine bottle, your beer, or whatever alcoholic drink is left open to air, Okay, this is where it can turn into ethanoic acid. So other than atmospheric oxygen being present, what else must be present for the ethanol to be oxidized? Answer is bacteria. Okay, you need the bacteria to be present. So what is going to be the chemical equation over here? Okay, with a full structural formula. Okay, this is actually looking like this. So once again, I got my um, ethanol. So this is ethanol. Now, in this case here, because it's atmospheric oxygen, it's literally just O2. Okay, I don't need to write the square brackets. Huh? So just think note. Square bracket is only if you are using like for the um, oxidizing agent with KMnO4. But if it's just atmospheric oxygen, just O2 will do. Okay. And you're going to get your ethanoic acid. plus water. So the reaction looks exactly the same as the previous one. It's just that this is the difference. Plus, because you know that the condition previously is to heat. In this case, this condition here is that I need bacteria to be present in the air. Okay, so that's why when in the can, in the bottle, your wine, your alcohols, uh, vodka or this, beers, they don't really get oxidized because it is not exposed to the surrounding air. Bacteria also is cleared. But once you open it up and you don't drink it, you expose it to air, it will turn into ethanoic acid. So suggest how it will taste when left open. You know acids give what kind of a taste? Sour taste. So the ethanol, if I left when the wine is exposed, right? The ethanol in the wine will be oxidized okay, by atmospheric oxygen and bacteria to become ethanoic acid. Bracket, which tastes sour. Okay, so make sure you write down the full explanation from it. Okay, for part two, I will not go through this because I think this one is uh, quite straightforward. Okay, so this one, I think you can go back and uh, do on your own. Huh? This one, you can go back homework. Huh? I'm going to do it on your own. Okay, step three here. In the lab, methanol is mixed with potassium manganate 7 and heated. Describe what will be observed. State the product's form. Products are... Huh? 
So what we observe, the acidified KMnO4 solution will turn from what to what. Okay, you can fill this up. The products form are what and water. Okay, so I'll give you all maybe about uh maybe 15 seconds. Okay. Or maybe 20 seconds, uh, 20 to 30 seconds to just go and fill this up. Then I'll just write the answer in. Okay, so yes, 20 seconds starts. Now let's go. It is just to show the answer. Uh, sorry, uh, this is just to show the answer for the recording. Okay, so purple to colorless, metanoid as it over here. Okay, we're gonna take a short four minute break. Let's go. Let's resume recording. So we're gonna go on to the last part, which is on macromolecules. Okay, so um really we're gonna look at uh, what macromolecules are and what are the two types of reaction that can actually form my macromolecules. Uh. So let's start. Okay, there are actually many examples of macromolecules in our daily lives. Some of them uh, with within us, okay, which is your DNA. Okay, you also have your proteins within us also. Some of it is uh, things around us. You got your PVC, pipings. Okay, polytetrafluoroethylene or PTFE, acateflon aka Teflon. What exactly is Teflon? Is the thing used on your frying pan to make it non-stick. Okay, so a lot of things around us are actually macromolecules. So what exactly is a macromolecule? So from the word macro actually tells you that it's a very large molecule. But how do we actually form this large molecule? Well, it's actually made out of many small molecules combined together. So this much more, this very large molecule is actually made out of many, many small molecules combined together. So one example of a macromolecule is actually my polyethene. Okay, this one shouldn't be too foreign to you. We actually covered this in alkenes. This is actually formed by addition polymerization. So for polyethene, okay, for polyethene here, we're going to look at it more in detail. So using the structure of polyethene, describe what is a polymer and how it is related to a macromolecule. Okay, so I say again, okay, uh, what is this? So polyethene is actually a polymer. Okay, it's actually a polymer. Okay, that's formed by many small repeating units of, uh, many small repeating units of ethene which we actually call them monomers. Right? These many small repeating units, we actually call them monomers. Okay? So just take note, polyethene is a polymer formed by many small repeating units of ethene, which we also call them the polymer. So we call them a monomer. So polymer, which is the big thing, okay, is actually formed by many monomers. Okay? So... Um, this is just to explain what exactly is a polymer. Huh? This, is this is actually just to explain what exactly is a polymer. So as polyethene is a, uh, sorry, huh? as polyethene is a long chain molecule, which we actually call the polymer. Well, actually, we are just trying to go back to the definition of what macromolecule is. Huh? So, as it is a long chain molecule, oh, sorry, I, I think maybe don't use the word long chain. As it is a very large molecule that is made out of many small molecules of ethene, which we actually call them the monomer. Therefore, it's a macromolecule. So, you realize what we are trying, what I'm trying to do here is 
Can you see this in green? It's actually related to this definition over here. Very large molecule made out of many small molecules. Polyethylene is a very large molecule that's made out of many small molecules. So you can see how we can actually use the, uh, the idea of what the polymer is to describe that it's actually a metal molecule. Okay, so, so how did I describe what is a polymer and how it's related to a macromolecule? So I say polyethylene is a polymer because it is formed by many small repeating units of ethene, which is called a monomer. So this first part here is identified over here. How is it related to a macromolecule? It's actually over here. Okay, number two. So I say that I use the definition of what a macromolecule is, and then from there, I answer it accordingly. Okay, so this is um, like sort of like a little fill in the blanks, but it's also showing you the answering technique using definitions to try to answer uh, with specification to a specific, uh, sorry, with um, reference to a molecule itself. Now, part C, monomers can form polymers through two basic types of reaction, uh, two basic types. What are the two basic types of reaction? Actually, they are called addition, polymerization, or we can have this thing called a condensation, polymerization. So polymers actually are formed by two main basic reactions, either addition or condensation polymerization. Okay, so we're going to go more into detail for the addition polymerization. Okay, exactly how to describe it. Okay, let's go on to slide 44. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Huh? Okay. Now, first thing first, let's look at revision. Huh? So this is Teflon. Okay, what is the repeating unit? What's the monomer? What's the repeating unit? What's the uh, polymer? So, okay, sorry, what's the repeating? Let's go part A first, step by step. Okay, let's not jump the gun. Huh? Okay, with the structural formula of the polymer given, deduce the repeating unit and the monomer and vice versa. So what I'm given here is the polymer, how to have the repeating unit. So quick recap, this is the polymer, right? The repeating unit is just without the bracket and the N, and hence, this is the answer. The monomer is when my extending hands are removed and I form a double bond in the middle. Okay? So this one, we have gone through it previously in Elkin already. So what I want us to now try, can you all now try part B, okay, on your own? Okay, now we're going to try part B on your own. Okay? This is a monomer. Okay, it is a monomer. I want you to draw from the monomer to the repeating unit and then to the uh, structural formula of the polymer. Okay, go ahead and try this out. Just a quick recap on how uh, the drawing goes okay, for addition polymerization. So it'll take about one minute. Okay, your time starts now. Let's carry on. Okay, repeating unit. So this is a monomer that is given here. So how to form the repeating unit, as I mentioned, break the double bond. One of the bond in double bond and extend it out. So this would be the repeating unit. You can see the two ends extending out. What's the structural formula of the polyvinyl chloride? Show at least two repeating units. So I'm going to draw two times of this repeating unit. First time. Second time. Okay, so you can see I draw the repeating unit twice. Then my two uh, bonds at the side, bracket, and so that's how you go about drawing the structural formula of the polymer showing at least two repeating units. So I'm going to highlight in different colors. So this one repeating unit. This is another repeating unit. Okay, so you can see how the polymer actually has two repeating units shown within it. Okay, so this was a quick recap of what we have gone through in your uh, alkenes, okay, how polymerization works. But because we're in macromolecules, you're going to go into polymerization again. So this is a quick recap on it. Now, 
we're going to look at addition polymerization in details now. Okay, really what happens during addition polymerization. So a lot more fill in the blanks, which is simpler now. So let's uh, kick off with it. So what is addition polymerization? So addition polymerization occurs when what? Unsaturated. Okay, which tells you that I need my uh, C double bond C. Okay, carbon, carbon double bond. Unsaturated monomers join together okay, without losing. any molecules or atoms. The polymer formed is actually called an addition polymer. Okay, so we mentioned this before, I'm not gonna go into details. Which homologous series can undergo addition polymerization? I think by now you would have, I heard me say many times already, is the alkene, okay, because due to the C double bond C. Okay, due to the C double bond C. Now, we are going to go into detail now, okay, because this description may be required of you, so you will need to be able to explain it. Okay, the explanation actually is not too tough. Lah. So how L ethene undergo addition polymerization to form polyethene? You must say the process. Okay, you must say the process. Actually, we have mentioned the process many, many times before already. So let's go through this. How does it work? So at high temperature and pressure, in the presence of a catalyst, you can see this is really the reaction. Okay, the carbon carbon double bond. Okay, carbon carbon double bonds of the ethene molecules, they will break. Okay, to be more precise, actually one of the carbon carbon double bond will break. So what happens after the bond is broken? Okay, each of the monomer will form single, to be more precise, single covalent bond with two other monomer. So every one monomer will actually combine with two other monomer. Okay. Eventually, they will all join together to form your polymer. In this case, this polymer is your polyethene. So you realize you're just describing that whole reaction condition over here. This is like the step one. And this is like the step two. So yeah, maybe don't say this like step two. This is the step two. And of course, this is like the conclusion. So if you can see how the thing is chunked up, you remember how I go about explaining how did we go about forming the polymer. You remember how to get from the monomer to the repeating unit to the polymer. Actually, all this is not an issue. Okay, You don't really need to memorize the whole thing in detail. Right? Because once you're used to the process, you actually get a hang of it. Okay, so... Um, I'm not going to go through D and E. These two, I'll just let you go back as homework because this one is actually quite simple. Okay. All of this here, I think uh, you should be able to do. La. I think this one is homework. I'm not going to bore you with going through all this. Uh, homework. Okay. So, if you need a bit of help going through this, okay, you can refer back to your previous examples that we have done just now, okay, that we did for warm up and worksheet one. Because addition polymerization is not too difficult for everybody because in our previous worksheet, we will have gone through it. Okay, so we're going to look at it. What is really new for everybody is actually this idea of condensation polymerization. So we're going to learn two new types of um, kind of diagrams. Okay, because these are actually formed from our addition polymerization. Okay, so what exactly are my addition polymerization? Okay, what exactly are they? So condensation polymerization occurs, okay, when monomers are okay, combined to form a polymer. with the removal of a small molecule. 
such as water. Okay, such as water. So the polymer formed here would be actually called a condensation polymer. Condensation polymer. So this is what condensation polymerization is. Okay, instead, the definition is definitely different from the addition polymerization. Got time? Go ahead and compare both. Okay. So what are the two main groups of condensation polymers that you need to know? Okay. In your syllabus, the two main ones you need to know, first one is called the polyamides. Okay, those of you who do bio, you realize what amides are. Second one is called the polyesters. Okay, we have actually covered esterification just now, so polyesters shouldn't be too much of a new thing for you. Okay, it's an extension of the esters. So let's first thing dive in to nylon. Nylon is a polyamide. Okay, nylon is a polyamide. Now, what are the two basic units for nylon? The first basic unit is this thing over here. Can you see that this is an acid? This is an acid. So I cover it in green. This is acid, right? So there are two acid groups here. So actually we call it a dicarboxylic acid. Okay, dicarboxylic acid. And this is actually a molecule with two. Okay, a molecule with two COOH group. Okay, with two COOH group. Okay. The next one, I got this one over here. Can you see this is the new group that you haven't seen before? I'm going to highlight it in uh, New York, um, Cyan. Okay. This group here, Okay, actually we call it uh, amine. Okay, amine. So this one here, actually we call it a diamine. Okay, so it's actually a molecule with two NH2 groups. Okay, so these are the basic units or okay, basic uh, units which are your monomers for nylon. So what's going to happen? Okay, we're going to see how nylons are made through condensation polymerization with these two monomers. Okay, next. So how can we describe, okay, the with the monomers form actually what happens? How is nylon formed? Okay, how is nylon formed? So the what and the what react together, the dicarboxylic acid. Okay. And the diamine okay, react together to form a polyamide. Okay, the form of polyamide. So what happens here? Can you see this is the di? This is the okay, dicarboxylic acid. I call it DCA. This one I call it DAR. Okay, just to keep it short. Can you see here? I'm going to highlight in green. Okay, this is actually my DCA. Dicarboxylic acid. I'm going to highlight in cyan. Oh, oops, sorry. I'm going to highlight in cyan. Okay, this is actually my diamine. Okay, can you see that the dicarboxylic acid diamine they alternate? Okay, they actually alternate. This one is dicarboxylic acid again. This one is diamine. So they're alternating. So they actually react, and a water molecule is actually produced from each pair of monomer. Okay, so you can see here in the dotted lines, can you see water is being extracted out? H H O H two O. OHH, H2O. Okay. And the monomers are joined together by what we call the amide linkage. 
Okay, this amide linkage here is actually what you see here in the dotted box. Okay, it is C double bond O and H. Be flexible, huh? you can rotate it around. Huh? It doesn't really matter whether the N is on the left or N is on the right. Okay, but it's a C double bond O attached to an N and a H. So this is actually what happens in the condensation polymerization. So draw the repeating unit of nylon. Okay, draw the repeating unit of nylon. It's actually like this. So it's interesting here because the repeating unit looks like this. Okay, not that simple, huh? not that simple looking. Okay, but once you get a hang of it, you will be able to see it. This is the repeating unit of the nylon. The linkage, as I've drawn here, so actually I'm going to draw it again. It's really just for you to get a hang of it. And the formula of this whole thing here is your repeating unit. I'm going to draw it out. Okay, so I'm going to draw the repeating unit. Bracket. N. Okay, so the same principles apply, same as previously. Okay, so nylon is one of the reaction. I will get amide linkages, and this is a polyamide. We're going to look at another type of reaction here. We're going to look at terylene. It's another one that's formed by condensation reaction. Okay, but what exactly is a terylene? Is formed by what? So this one once again is a dicarboxylic acid. So realize acid is definitely involved here. This is actually a diol, double alcohol. Okay, double alcohol. So double carboxylic acid, double alcohol. I think you can get ready to know what this is going to form. This is going to form my esters. Okay, so the dicarboxylic acid And the diol, okay, they react together to form a polyester. Okay, they react together to form a polyester. What happens in this reaction? Once again, my water molecule is formed. Okay, my water, oh no. It's not following me anymore. I think uh, my pen, okay, good. Okay, so water molecule is formed. Once again, very similar. Okay, the monomers are joined together. But in this case here, the monomers are now joined together by a different linkage. In this case, we call them the ester linkage. So what's the repeating unit? I think from here, you can see that the repeating unit looks like this. C double bond O. C double bond O. O. Okay. So you can see the diacid, the diol over here. That's the repeating unit that we have. The linkage will be the one indicated here. This is the linkage. And the formula is actually just the repeating unit. But I have it with the bracket and the end. Okay. So this is the polyamide. This is the polyester. Now, the reactions are actually quite okay. It's quite simple. To identify them, really, if you ask me, knowing how the linkage looks is important. Okay, knowing how the linkage looks is important. Okay, so what next is really knowing how to draw them. Okay, knowing how to draw them. Okay, so in the next question, question four, okay, we're going to look at whether they are addition or condensation polymers. We're going to draw the repeating unit, the linkage, and then draw the monomer. Okay, how to exactly identify them? We're going to start looking at it. So actually, in terms of the key idea of what the macromolecules are, we've covered it. Now we're just going to go a little bit more in depth to try to uncover it. Okay, so let's look at this. This is the formula of a polyethylene glutarate. What type of polymer is this? Very simple. 
Look at the linkage. This is an ester linkage. Ester linkage tells you that most probably this is a polyester. And polyester, you know, is a condensation polymer. So look at the linkage. If you identify ester linkage or you identify amide linkage, then you know that it's a condensation polymerization. So type of polymer, this is actually a... Oh, no. Okay, sorry. Uh. I realize my pen is not working there. Okay, so this is a condensation polymer. The repeating unit and the linkage. So if you look at the whole thing here, okay, the repeating unit is exactly this whole long chain. Okay, the repeating unit is exactly this whole long chain here. So I'm going to draw it out. The linkage is this. Oh no. What a bad time. Oh, sorry. Okay, I think uh, my pen is failing on me. Here's my mouse. Okay, you can. Okay, so uh, let's uh, carry on with this link here. The ester linkage. This is my ester linkage. This is my repeating unit. The monomer, uh, this is the part where it gets interesting. Okay, the interesting part here tells is that you need to be able to identify where are the segments of the molecules. So I'm going to use green to show you the dye acid. So can see here, this is the dye acid because ester linkage consists of a dye acid and a diol. So this is the monomer, one of the monomer. The other monomer is actually, let me highlight in uh, maybe purple, this and this one over here. So you need to see that this oxygen is a continuation over here. So what exactly are my monomers? I'm going to first draw my di acid. So C double bond O, OH, CH2, bracket 3, C double bond O, OH. Okay, I'm going to draw a shortened form. Scroll down. I'm going to draw my di all now. Oh, oh no, it's happening again. Ding, 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 ding. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think uh, once I do finish this, I guess my computer is telling me to take a break already. Spare you all from all the agony. So monomer, this is one of them. Okay, I'm sorry for this, but it uh, seems like my mouse is not working that well. Okay, so this is the first monomer. This is the di acid. Oh, sorry, the dicarboxylic acid. Okay, the next one is going to be the diol. So it's going to be a C O H at the site. CH2. CH2 O H. Okay, let me just double check. Yes. Okay, so this is the diol. Okay, so this is how you go about doing identifying the linkage first. To let you know what's the polymer, what type of polymer is it, what's the repeating unit. On the monomer, okay, because you know it's a ester, ester, okay, you know that one of them must be acid, one of them must be an alcohol. Okay, so this is another one. I'm just going to go through this one last one. Huh? Oh my goodness. Good. Okay, so now you can see here. Uh, you realize the first thing I always identify, what linkage do I see? This is an amide linkage. So if this is an amide linkage, this thing here I'm looking at is a polyamide. Okay, polyamide. 
So type of polymer, I know it's a condensation polymerization. Condensation polymer. Oh, this will be the last one I'm going to go through already. What's the repeating unit? You can see there's a long chain here, but take note, this is a CH2. Okay. This is a... This is a CH28. This is a CH26. So they are different. Huh? So the CH28 actually belongs to my dye acid, as you can see here. My CH26 belongs to my diamine over here. Okay, so monomer, I think you can see already. Repeating unit and the linkage, let's draw them out now. My repeating unit actually is my green plus my purple. Okay, so this is my repeating unit. I'm going to draw it out now. Okay, so this is the repeating unit, the linkage. Okay, my comb is going so sorry already. Okay, my linkage should be this. Okay, this is my linkage. Right, monomers as I've drawn just now, if I highlighted in the different colors. So I'm gonna just do my diamine first. Okay, so at the end of the terminal, you actually draw an H. Okay, I tell you, I draw the green color one first. Okay, so N H C H two six N H. Now you realize there's the two blanks over here. These two blanks are actually your H. Okay, because they're diamine. So this is the amine group. Okay, can you can see this diamine group. Huh? Then the next one I'm going to draw is my dicarboxylic acid. So I got C double bond O, CH2 bracket 8, C double bond O. Now I need to convert this into a dye acid. So double O, right? Down here must be OH. Down here must be OH. Okay, so this is my diamine. This is my dicarboxylic acid. Okay, it can be flexible a bit. It not always must be diamine, dicarboxylic acid. You can see some of the monomers later on. It will look slightly different. Okay, and you can try to figure it out. Huh? So, uh, okay, so you can see here the functional groups are actually there. Okay, the monomers must have the functional group. Okay, so this is for your polymers. Okay, there are many more examples at the back. I'm not going to go through them. Uh, maybe when uh, subsequent lessons, okay, I will really just run through them first before we go on to doing other papers. Lah. Okay, so this will be the end of what I'm going to go through for tonight already. Okay, now it is uh, 43 already. Okay, I'm not going to go through anymore. I think by now all of you should be brain dead already. So we will end here for today. Okay, if you want, you can continue to do the rest of the other slides. It's actually just a continuation of whatever we have been covering. Okay, but actually this marks the end of our macro molecules already. Okay. Okay, so that's all from me. Okay, that's all from me already. So thank you everybody. Let me end my recording. Okay.